Welcome back for a little bit of an update. Uh, Mar has been commissioned to make two more of these uh, floor tape looms, uh, two of them. Uh, one is going out sooner than the other, and the one that's going out sooner, the owner has asked for the legs to be removable. We've never done one of these with the removable legs, so I came up with a plan. Um, what I've done is I've got two cleats that will mount to the bottom of the table. The legs will be attached to that and they'll come out, be removable with two bolts, quarter 20 bolts. Uh, so let me give you an update on what I had to do to do that. So first of all, this is one of the blocks and these have to sit at a 10 degree angle. So this hole has to be drilled at 10 degrees. Let me show you how I did that. Here at the drill press, I essentially made a jig and this is a 10 degree slope jig. It's got a backing plate for clamping the workpiece on and a stop to keep it from going any deeper than you want. <clears throat> I had to remove this table and fasten this directly to the drill press table because the depth of the bit we're using is this. This is a one inch three fluted spiral cutting uh, drill bit with a, um, a, a spiral uh, bit on the end of it to draw it into the workpiece. And I didn't want to draw it into the workpiece. I wanted to feed the drill bit at my speed, not what the drill bit wanted to go in at. So we chucked this up onto the drill. And the workpiece went in, sat just like this, and then I could do my drilling. Now, in order for that to not draw the, work, the drill into the workpiece, I pre-drilled a quarter inch hole, a little over a quarter inch hole through the, the, the workpiece here that would basically bypass that spiral uh, screw, is a screw, a screw to pull the, uh, the, the drill into the workpiece. So that way I could go at my speed carefully and slowly. So I did this one, then flipped it around, drilled that side, and then the other one, which is up toward the front of the, of the, of the table, and you'll see what I mean in a moment, is, is, is trapezoidal in shape. That, I had to put a blocker in here to get the depth, and then I flipped it around and did the same thing the other way. So uh, that's how I drilled the holes. I wish I'd filmed that, but sometimes I don't get the cameras out. I get so involved in my work, I just don't bother bringing the cameras out. Anyhow, so now on to fastening these to the, to the table itself. So you can see here, the table itself has this taper on both sides and you want the block that's going to hold the legs to fit that taper. So this was the first cut to shape so it fits perfectly in that taper. Now this, this edge will be, be uh, chamfered all the way around so it doesn't look as rough. Then the other, the other one goes back here, right about there. And this, is, this is marked for where it needs to go and I have two lines here marked where it needs to go and it's going to sit right there. And then the legs of course will go in at the correct 10 degrees. Now, to bolt this down, we're going to use threaded inserts and quarter 20 bolts. The parts are these quarter inch inserts and these quarter inch bolts. The quarter inch inserts are quarter 20 internal thread. They are uh, for hardwoods and the bolts are grade 8. Well, why grade 8 bolts when grade 5 would probably work? Well, what you buy at Home Depot is barely grade five. So most of it's just above, just barely above grade two. It gives it a chance to break or to fail. Don't want to deal with that. So how am I going to get everything lined up? I take the piece of block that holds the legs. I fasten it down to the table with double-sided tape. I drill holes through the block to the table at predetermined locations. Then when I remove it, I know exactly where I need to drill the holes for the inserts and I know exactly where I need to drill and counterbore the holes, or in this case, counterbore and drill the holes for the bolts. And once I drill the quarter inch holes, excuse me, half inch holes, and I it put those into the, uh, the tabletop, that's not going anywhere. And just for added protection, I'm also going to add some epoxy to these. And they are driven in with a hex, six millimeter hex, with an impact driver. It just makes the life a whole lot easier. This will be first counterboard and then drilled through quarter inch, maybe a tad over quarter inch for some clearance and a little bit of slop. And then the owner will be able to fasten these legs down 
and you know, hand tight is fine, they're not going anywhere. So now the next step, obviously, is to drill these holes through the blocks to the table in order to start mounting all of the mounting hardware. Where is that? I have a bolt that's out of the bag. Here it is. A bolt that's out of the bag. Yeah! A bolt that's out of the bag. There it is. Grade 8. Almost aircraft grade. Little change of plan. Um, what I'm going to do is use hot glue, gun, hot glue uh, to glue the um, cleats in place. That'll hold them very nicely for, uh, for the drilling because I'm just putting down pressure on with the drill pit. So I put a, a stop block here for where exactly where this one has to go and I can just put it down with my hands like that and line it up before the glue kind of does its set thing. And a little hot glue gun, so let's give it a few dabs. As you know, you can knock this stuff off with a hammer. Hold that for a little bit. Okay, that's on there. Let's do the other end. That's where I want it, just like that. And a little dab will do you. And quickly before it, it, it kicks or cools. Okay, so sim simple as hot glue. So let me turn that off so it can cool down. Now I want to mark the tops of these to where I need to drill the holes. If you haven't already got a pair of these, I highly recommend these uh, vernier dial indicators. They're an inch uh, instead of being they're in they're in um, inches fractions as opposed to decimal like the ones that machinists use and the ones that I use for years. And um, these, are, these are really cool and they really do a great job of measuring things very fine. When you're doing planing wood, this is great for getting the exact thickness you, you need. So what I do is I'm locking this at one inch. I want to be one inch from this edge of the hole. Okay, I'm going to mark that and put a dot. Cross line there. I know, someone's going to complain, you don't use those like that. Don't use them like that. I know, I get it. But they do, I'm only going into wood, I'm not doing metal. So let's set this at one inch. And actually, I, I think I want three quarters of an inch here. Yeah, three quarters of an inch here. Give it a little mark. And pencil. Same here. And a pencil. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit these with a with a center punch. Go drill some holes. Got the table set up and a drill bit that I want that's going to go all the way through and tap, just get into the, the table a little bit. So, like I said, we're going to drill some holes. Notice I'm clearing the chips regularly. Uh, good idea to clear the chips so you don't get binding with the drill bit. Okay, let's move on. Knock these off and drill all the counter bores and countersinks in the big holes. Put in the put in the, the inserts. So I'll grab a little Warrington hammer and off. Off. I just want to um, 
Well, this one is kind of obvious where it's going. Top, that's marked top. But I want to put some little marks on here so I remember exactly what the orientation is. So, bip, bip. This, this one's kind of obvious. So there they are. The holes are in here. The holes are in here. And what I need to do now is to, um, oh, there's a wire dragging down in front of my camera lens. Let's get that out of the way. Now that's terribly unprofessional, isn't it? So I've got to scrape off the glue, make sure it's completely clear, and then go ahead and, um, and, uh, and uh, drill, back counterbore these and drill them through and, count, and drill these for the inserts. So let's get busy with that. This stuff peels off pretty easily, doesn't it? Back at the drill press. So the washers for the um, bolts are 5 eighths in diameter. And uh, the bolt heads are a lot smaller because they're, they're 7 16 nuts on the heads on the top of these. But I don't have a 5 eighths um, brad point, but I've got these nice DeWalt uh, spade bits that are actually very clean cutters. I've had these for years and they, they don't even sell them anymore, but they, they make very clean holes. And it'll, there's a 5 8 one, so it'll fit the washer and then the bolt, of course, is going to go easily and they'll be able to get a socket in there. So, <clears throat> time to drill some more holes. Oh yeah, I've taped this off at the depth that I want to go at for the so that's as far as I want to go, then I'll through drill them with the slightly over quarter inch holes. Okay, so there's the counter bores for the um, the hex bolts. They're going to hold the saw. Now they get bored through. I'm going to get longer ones. I'm going to get bored through with a, with a clearance hole now. And then I'll, I'll sand off. There's a little bit of, a, of um, a raised edge on this hole. Because spade bits will do that, even though it does have very clean holes. So we're done with that. <sighs> now I want to drill through holes. So the bit that I've chosen for clearance on the quarter inch is 9 30 seconds. Now, because of the spade bit, I've got a concentric hole, little nib right in the middle of that. So it'll it'll pr it'll pretty much guarantee contrasticity be con whatever between the through hole and the counter bore will be concentric with each other. Not that it truly matters, but you know, being an ex-machinist, you think like that. Okay, and I know now I'm going to have to get longer bolts because, yeah, that's not going all the way through. So I've got to get some, uh, these are one and a half. I've got to get some probably one and three quarters or twos to go all the way through because the, the uh, top of the insert is, is cleared for the hex to drive it in place. So the threads are down a little deeper into the insert than at, they're not at the surface, right at the surface. So I need to get longer bolts, but let's go ahead and, uh, and drill the tabletop for the inserts. To drill the holes for the inserts, I'm using a 3 8 inch bit. It's not a half inch, 3 8 inch bit. The inserts are half inch. Um, and a stop collar, because it's only about, according to the drawing, it's 0.4, not 4.92 depth. I'm going in half an inch, a little more than half an inch. And um, because this hole is a little bigger than I expected it to be, my brad point uh, won't center, but this drill bit will. So let's, let me drill these holes now. And there we go. Now I can put the inserts in. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use the epoxy or not. 
I just might just might just might just might mount them in because uh, they have they they are very robust inserts. So let's get started with that. So a while ago, I got this uh, drill block Milescraft from Milescraft uh, off of Amazon, of course, and it's a drill guide. It's got a hardened insert in here, and you put it flush down to your workpiece, and it guides your drill bit straight in. Well, in order to guide this straight in, it sits a little bit off at an angle because of where the where the threads start. This is half inch. This has got a half inch outside thread. If I turn it around so that it's flush with the with the uh, workpiece, I can just put that on there, and that'll guide it pretty straight in. And use my impact driver. Here we go. Hmm. Raise the surface a little bit of the uh, wood, but I can plane that back down again. Hmm. Maybe the hole should have been a bigger than a 3 8 Let me get some more of these inserts. Okay, there's the inserts. And there's a quarter 20 bolt. Screws in there real nice. It did pull up a cup, a little bit of the wood off the base of the table here. It kind of pulled out some grain, and I'll have to plane that back down. But I think I'm there for this. So let's. Uh, I got to get some longer bolts, and then I can put this whole thing together, or at least put this together. Helps if I pay attention to the camera. So um, get the longer bolts. Mount these in place. Then I can mount the legs, but first thing I need was plane these down because it did driving it in raised it up. I think next time I'll use these, I'll go up a little bigger than three eighths on the uh, on the bit. Okay, so they're nice and smooth now. They're level with the surface. One of the tricks I looked up for putting these larger inserts in is you bevel the entry hole, oh, maybe an eighth inch deep at 45 degrees. It aids in the, the insert going in and not lifting the top grain of the top grain of the wood. But in this case, they're, they're deep and below the surface and I was able to smooth them up with my block plane. So now the, the final test fit of the blocks is gonna happen. I've got two inch bolts with washers. Get them to the, in the holes. There we go. Take a 7 16 socket to just snug them down by hand for, at first. Same here. 17 inch socket first. And with a ratchet, I'm going to tighten them down. You know, not too tight. You don't want to over torque these. Just make sure that they're tight enough. You know, finger tight. Okay, maybe 30, 30, 30 foot pounds, 30 inch pounds or 30 foot pounds. Okay, so those are on tight. They're not going anywhere. And now we have a set of removable cleats for the legs. Now, as I said earlier, these holes are at 10 degrees here and here. And the legs, which have been turned on the ends to uh, fit in the holes, and that one fits nice. It's, it's a little bit loose, but this is going to get epoxied and screwed in place. The rest of these, they need a little tweaking to get them to fit right. And there is an orientation because these are tapered, and you got to get the got to get the tapers right. Okay, so now I have to maybe I'll chuck these back up on the lathe and turn them down a little bit because the holes. In the, in the cleats, they're fairly precise, because you saw the bit I used, they're very precise. But the legs are turned on the lathe, a little bit of meat left on them, except this one. So I'll turn those and get them to where they're uh, the, right, uh, the right diameter and fit them in place, and then glue them and screw them, and then put that whole assembly aside, these aside, and then Mara can continue on with 
the remaining work she needs to do on these before they get stained, final assembly, broken down, put in a box, and shipped out to the new owners. <laughs> So, um, they're all turned to fit, they fit nice and snugly now, and now I need to glue and screw these in place. You don't need to see me do that because it's just boring gluing and screwing. Anyhow, uh, so this, that ends my portion of this project, the rest is up to Mara, and as like I said, if you want to see a complete one of these being built, we have a three-part video early, in the channel. I'm probably going to set that up as a, as, as a um, what do they call it, you know, put them all together in one package, I forget what it's called. Anyhow, so there they are. The next step with Mara would be to put these, put the whole thing together, get the measurements correct, and we'll clip off the legs of the right height for this particular uh, setup. Until next time, make great things out of wood.